This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. New tonight, we are learning more about why St. Louis prosecutors agreed to a plea deal with a man charged in connection with his wife's fatal fall in a parking garage. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Ann Allred. Mike Bush has the night off. Bradley Jenkins will serve two years of probation for misdemeanor domestic assault stemming from the 2019 incident. Our Christine Byers met with St. Louis Circuit Attorney Gabe Gore about an hour ago to find out why his office agreed to this deal. Christine. And Alyssa Martin captured some of the final moments of her life on her cell phone. Court documents say she was arguing with her husband of only two weeks before her fatal fall. The city's top prosecutor tells me the evidence didn't show that he shoved her to his to her death. On June 2nd, around 1.45 a.m., police were called to the Stadium East parking garage. There, they found Bradley Jenkins straddling his 27-year-old wife's body. He was covered in blood and appeared to be intoxicated. Police found his wife's cell phone on the seventh floor of the parking garage, and it was still recording. Police said it captured the couple arguing, her voice telling him to stop hitting her in the face, and not long after that, she can be heard screaming as she fell to her death. Originally, St. Louis prosecutors charged Jenkins with felony domestic assault. It was supposed to go to trial next week, but St. Louis Circuit Attorney Gabe Gore says the evidence did not support felony charges. It's been a three year investigation and prosecution for a reason. So I would suggest to the public that no stone was left unturned. They can feel secure in that fact and that in fact the plea agreement that was reached reflects the highest charge that the evidence would support. Alyssa Martin's mother has filed a civil lawsuit pending against the parking garage and Jenkins. In it, her family alleges Martin was running from Jenkins when she fell. Coming up at 6, I'll bring you more from my interview with Gore and what he has to say to those criticizing his administration's decision in this case. Developing news out of Troy, Illinois, where police are investigating a homicide. Officers were called to check on someone on Lower Marine Road. In the home, they found a deceased woman in her 60s. Police say she had died of her injuries. The victim has not been identified. Anyone with information should uh, call police. Today, a St. Charles County man who killed four people, including two children, was sentenced to 210 years, and that's on top of a death sentence. Richard Emery killed his girlfriend, Kate Caston, her two children, and her mother in 2018. He was sentenced to death for the murders last year. The 210 additional years are connected to crimes after the murders that were not part of his original trial. Today, the family released a statement saying in part, today isn't about us. It's about the individuals who were affected by him. Justice was served. Tonight, police are investigating a shooting in North St. Louis County. It happened overnight outside of a gas station on Chambers Road. Police say a man was shot during an attempted robbery. The person is expected to survive. Police have not said if they've made any arrests. In just the last half hour, police told us a fire that hurt several children in University City was caused by a child playing with the stove. The fire happened last night at a family's home on Etzel Avenue. A baby's in the hospital being treated for smoke inhalation. Five other children had minor injuries or now are out of the hospital, and the Red Cross is helping this family. Homecoming festivities are canceled at Riverview Gardens High School following fights. There was a fight in the building yesterday and another one outside the school. About 15 students were arrested. Two had minor injuries. Now the homecoming parade, pep rally, and dance are canceled. Today we talked to two former students who are part of an organization helping with trauma. They're trying to work with the school to help students. When you have a few people that are showing up with anger, it changes the atmosphere. It becomes toxic. And if you're not addressing that in the right format, it's just going to continue to grow. Students were remote today. The school is still deciding when students will return in person. Tonight, we're hearing from the chief judge who is overseeing the transition away from cash bail in St. Clair County. Illinois becomes the first state in the nation to abolish cash bail on Monday. Our political editor, Mark Maxwell, has continuing coverage on that seismic shift in the criminal justice system. Kelly and Ann, the St. Clair County Courthouse is a frenzy of activity the last few days. Two days in a row now, we've seen lawyers, judges, police, and parole officers all holding meetings and ironing out last-minute changes before everything changes on Monday. Almost everyone who works in the court system will see their schedule change in one fashion or another. 
One entire courtroom there will be converted, dedicated only to processing people who get arrested right away to try and determine if they should go home or go to jail before their trial. That hearing in itself will take a lot more intense work and investigation. The judges plan to use a new risk assessment tool as a guide. We saw some of those new forms they plan to use in that process today, too. And most of all, the chief judge said he felt obligated to sit down and walk us through it all, in large part due to the intense public scrutiny of all of the idea as politicians campaigned against it. It really is unfortunate that we have that kind of narrative, and, and that's why I felt a responsibility to, to, to give this interview, is that somebody needs to be the voice of reason, talk about this factually, talk about it in terms of, of addressing the iniquities that exist with the understanding that there are issues that we're going to have to deal with as we go forward. The voice of reason there tonight at 6, a closer look at just how courts will make that decision to keep a defendant locked up now that judges can no longer set a price on their liberty. It is feeling like fall outside. Plenty of sunshine, those cooler temperatures. Mm -hmm. Let's check in with weather first meteorologist. Well, who was this guy? Jim <laughs> Castillo. Jim, we missed you. Missed it's so you great to have you back. Welcome back. Thank you. Missed you guys to the entire newsroom. So good to be back. Uh, so t this morning we started out in the 40s, guys. I mean, it does feel like autumn. We're 10 days away from the official start. And you see a little bit of orange and yellow on here. Well, that's that warm air that's still in place. So upper 70s and low 80s for high temperatures today. And we're still at 82 in St. Louis. So lower 80s, but a lot of us stayed in the upper 70s. And there it is in Lambert, 82 degrees. North northeast wind at 6. Humidity very comfortable at 28%. And tonight's forecast, you know, those areas of river fog, the rivers are warmer than these overnight low temperatures, which dropped into the 40s this morning outside of St. Louis. So you get some of this river fog that will be patchy again tonight. Otherwise, 54 in St. Louis tonight. Much more on our forecast. Next chance of rain, I'll let you know when coming up. All right, see you then, Jim. Well, we should not be hearing the crinkling of leaves under our feet just yet, but fall has seemingly come early. Weather First Meteorologist Tracy Hinson explains why some trees are already shedding their leaves. It certainly feels like fall outside, but after the hot and dry summer we had, our fall colors might look a lot more like this. If we keep on this current trend, I'm kind of more leaning towards eh. Oh dear. That is not how we want a botanist describing the future of fall colors. It has been uh, pretty dry within the last couple weeks. I, I know that we've gotten a little bit of rain, but not enough to really carry us through. If, if this continues, fall may not be the greatest. Think lots of bare branches and browns. We're seeing it in some of our trees. Uh, they got a little scorched with that last heat wave we had with the high humidity and temperatures. And so a lot of trees have dropped a few leaves uh, as a result. And also with the drought, they may be also dropping more leaves now too. So we may not see as much fall color later on. Now don't get too disappointed. This won't affect every tree. There will of course be outliers that did get enough rainfall or maybe they're in the shade. So you'll still have some trees that produce those beautiful yellows and oranges. In St. Louis, Tracy Henson, five on your side.